So the original Battlefront 2 back in 2005 is, in my opinion, one of the greatest Star Wars games, if not one of the greatest video games that I have ever played. As a kid, I played it for hours upon hours upon hours, and I, I mean, there's just so many different options that you had when you put this game in. I mean, right off the bat, it hits you with these iconic movie scenes. Just it, on the left side, you have like the good guys. On the right side, you had the bad guys. Right off the bat, I mean, you're hit with the amazing music. You have cool scenes. So instantly, you're thrown into the action with all sorts of Star Wars stuff, and it's just bam right in your face so so right away you know you're playing a star wars game it puts you in the mood to play star wars because you can see all the battles happening in the main menu so the menu was cool and there was just so many different options like in battle if, for 2005 there was a lot to do you had instant action you had the story mode you had galactic conquest and there was a huge map variety there was i mean the story wasn't the greatest. I mean, the game's 14 years old. It didn't exactly hold up too well. But, I mean, if I go back and I play it today, I still have some fun with it. So, I mean, the graphics aren't exactly holding up, but it's an original Xbox game. I mean, I don't know what you expect. Compared to EA's Star Wars, there's just a huge difference in terms of content. Like, Battlefront 2 has tons of heroes, and it has space battles, and it has an interesting 501st story mode where they give a voiceover from the the uh, actual guy that played Django Fett and voiced the clones in the movies. I mean, there's just so many options that you could do in the game, and you could choose different game modes. Like, they had hunt mode where you could play as the, the monsters, like the Wampas, or you could play as the Ewoks or the Gungans. Uh, there was, like I said, giant space battles where you could fly from ship to ship, and there was uh, the epic conquest mode, and then... Uh, if you had it on PC, you could mod it so you could have even more NPCs on it. And it was just insane. And I would always go in as a kid and I would set the reinforcements to like the maximum amount. And then I would just play one map for like an hour, an hour and a half. And it would just be nothing but throwing yourself with the enemy over and over and over. And it just made such epic battles. And you could just, you put yourself in the position of like being a clone when you played the story mode and you, like the story mode wasn't exactly groundbreaking for the time, but compared to what we get in most games like today, like a Call of Duty story mode, where it's just like a very linear thing and it's just over in like a few missions, this actually it had quite a few amount of missions, uh, and the story mode gave some lore. It tied in episodes uh, three and four really well. Like they transition you from the like episode three where you're the 501st and you have Order 66, and it transitions perfectly to when you're the stormtroopers and you're like doing the Emperor's bidding. So I mean, the story mode. I think they did a good job with the story mode for the time. And then Galactic Conquest was great to pass time with your friends or something if you wanted to play split screen. You, it was just set up like a giant risk board and you could just go here and go there and you could there was just so many different options for galactic conquest you could play galactic conquest like 50 times and you would never have the same outcome because you could buy different heroes and buy different reinforcements and buy better blasters and there's tons of different upgrades you could spend your points on depending on like what areas you wanted to face and you could just you could play that for a week with your friend. So Galactic Conquest was huge, and then Instant Action, and, and it had multiplayer. I never personally played the multiplayer, because, I mean, I was just a kid and I didn't have Xbox Live or anything. So I, I would have loved to play this game online with friends. It would have been great. But let's compare it to, like, EA's Battlefront for a minute. So the big difference between the original Battlefronts and the EA version of Battlefronts is just, for starters, the developers actually listen to player feedback. If you look back at the original Battlefront game, like the very first one, they didn't have space battles, you couldn't play as the hero, uh, I mean, you were very limited in terms of maps, I mean, there wasn't very much you could do. I mean, it was still a fun game, but there wasn't very many game modes, I think there was only one game mode. And when it came to Battlefront 2, they listened to the feedback. They added more game modes. They added more stuff you could do. They added space battles. They added the option to be the heroes. I mean, the heroes were overpowered in Battlefront 2, but that's what made you feel like a hero because you're obviously way better than the Stormtroopers. You should one-shot them because you have a lightsaber. But then you look at the Star Wars Battlefront 2 EA edition, and they took a step backwards from their first game. Uh, you look at the Battlefront 2015, it had 
a skirmish mode, which was their version of like playing the AI. Now, it wasn't exactly the greatest, the AI was dumb as a rock, but at least you had the option to play against the computer. Uh, and then they had private matches. You could invite your friends, you could invite entire groups of people. Like I have a YouTube channel, I could invite 40 people and we could have our own private server and we could just do private matches and there was tons of different options you could do with that. And then when Battlefront uh, 2 came out, there was no private matches, there's no skirmish mode, they have the arcade. Uh, it's just a watered down version of 2015. I mean, yes, they've improved on the graphics, they've added more heroes, but then some could argue that the gameplay itself has been downgraded. It's kind of just personal preference. Now, they did add space battles and they added a story mode. Now, we all know how lackluster the story mode for the new Battlefront 2 is, uh, but they did add it nonetheless, so they did listen in that aspect. With the original Battlefront 2s, every improvement they made between Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2 was great. It's like they improved on everything that everybody wanted, and they didn't take away anything from the first game. With the EA versions, they took away stuff from their 2015 version, and in Battlefront 2, they just took some stuff away and then made room for loot boxes. Didn't go over very well. And it's like the developers don't listen. Like, you can't pick and choose what you want. Like, you have to add... Every time you have a new game, you need to add more to what was on the previous game. You need to listen to feedback, not take away some things and add some things in other places. Like, you have to do both. So, let's say EA makes a Battlefront 3. It needs to have everything that Battlefront 2 has at this current state, and then some. Like, right now, I think it has like 14 or 16 heroes. It should have that at launch for Battlefront 3, not less, and then add more with DLC. See, the original Battlefront 2 didn't even have DLC or a season pass or microtransactions. All of that stuff came at launch. You had more heroes and more maps at launch with in, in a game from 2005 than you have a, in, in this game one year later for Battlefront 2 in 2017. Keep in mind, this version is backed by EA, they're a multi-billion dollar company, it's a triple A game, you have freaking developers from DICE, they know what they're doing, they make Battlefield every year. Uh, you have arguably some of the best of the best developers working on this Star Wars game, and it's still full of bugs and glitches and stuff. Like, the 2005 version doesn't have any bugs and glitches. Like, I, I don't run out with Darth Maul and the 2005 version and slice people down and they just don't take damage from my lightsaber, or my force push in 2005 doesn't just not decide not to work sometimes. And then you go and you play the new EA version of Battlefront, and you could be on like a 30 kill streak, and then all of a sudden your lightsaber throw doesn't work, or your force powers just decide to completely glitch out, and then you can't use any force powers for the entire rest of the match. There's just so many different things that can go wrong in this new game that it just takes away from the fun. So if the original Battlefront 2 was made today, and it had all the same features, but with like 2017's graphics, oh, that would be the greatest game ever. Because the graphics are phenomenal in this new game. I mean, I'm not gonna, I won't fault the graphics at all. They got the graphics down pat for the Battlefront 2. It looks amazing. The space battles are great, the explosions are great, the voice acting is great. I mean, they captured the feel of Star Wars down to the T, but graphics aren't everything. I'd much rather have a upgraded version of the old Battlefront 2 with just wee better graphics than amazing graphics and crappy gameplay. To be fair, the new Battlefront 2 has come a long way. They've made a lot of improvements. They've listened to feedback. They have made some good changes over the past year. Have they made enough? Not really. Uh, I mean, you still have the EAS kissers, which will defend this game to the grave, saying, oh, they had to redo the progression system, and they had to change this, and they had to change that, and they were set back so many months. The game has been out for well over a year now, and so far they have added General Grievous, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, they've added Ewok Hunt, they've added a new Millennium Falcon, and they've added some skins for the, for the different heroes and the clone troopers. So all of that stuff that I've mentioned, 
over the past year, if it was like a regular game made by a company that actually cares about their product, we would have had all the DLC we've gotten over the span of a year in like a month or two if it was any other game company. But since it's EA and DICE and it's all about the cash grab and getting as much money as they can for as little as possible, they just slap the Star Wars name on it and hope for the best. We are supposed to get Count Dooku, which is coming out in just a few days from the time I'm making this video. And we're supposed to be getting Anakin Skywalker in a new game mode in February. So, if they make some improvements, they fix some glitches and stuff, which they haven't yet, so who knows if they will. But if they do, then I think Battlefront 2 could be a pretty good product when it's done in February. But will it ever be as good as the original? No. Will it be close? Yeah, I, th I think it could be pretty close. I mean, it, it, it will never have the Galactic Conquest. It will never have the instant action where you can play against the AI. And it's weird because I think the AI back in 2005 is way smarter than the AI they have in this game. It will never have tons of hunt modes. And I, it, was just, it will never live up to the original Battlefront 2 name. So let's say EA makes a Battlefront 3. If they make... Battlefront 3 and it has everything that Battlefront 2 has at the end of its lifespan and then add on to that I think Battlefront 3 could potentially be one of the best Star Wars games ever But they have to actually listen to feedback They can't try to nickel and dime their fans and add microtransactions What they don't understand is if they make a great product from the start Then the money will come eventually. I mean the gold standard is Star Wars Battlefront 2. I mean for years all people wanted was just a upgraded version of the original Battlefront 2. When I heard that EA was going to make a new Star Wars game and DICE were going to be the developers, I was through the roof ecstatic. Like, I knew DICE was a good company, I knew they were good, had good developers, I knew that they worked on Battlefield, and I was super excited for a huge open world experience. And so far, we've just gotten linear maps, and we've gotten glitches, and we've gotten no destructible environments. So, in my opinion, I don't think anything will ever live up to the standard of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Can it come close? Sure. It depends on how much they actually want to listen to feedback and how much time and investment they actually want to put into a Star Wars game. Do I think EA is going to listen and do that? No. So, until EA loses the rights in 2023, and Disney can just give it to somebody else. Who knows? But until then, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But that is my opinion on Star Wars Battlefront 2. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications. And I will talk to you guys next time. We would be honored if you would join us. You cannot resist.